Day B, BZ Dynasty. It's just hard. We want to do so much. It's hard being young, black, woke. You know what I'm mean? saying? Like, we want more. What's up, BZ Dynasty? This is your boy, the man, the myth, and the legend. This is your boy, Mr. JB. Sign on, check y'all. Show me some love. Show me some love. Show me some love. So, what's up, Dynamites? What up, BZ Dynasty family? I'm back again with another banger. So, I just, I gotta go ahead and be real with y'all. I gotta, I gotta vent. I gotta, I gotta, I would tell my turn my chair around just so I can get up close and personal with you all, my family. Y'all. I'm gonna have to go in. Your boy gonna have to go ahead and just start just just hitting y'all with, with these bombs, Jack, with the truth. Now, let me explain something. Okay, people that watch this channel, they know me and Shiny D. They know what we about. All right, you can tell from the intro. Young black woke, right? We be a young black woke. One more. So a part of that wokeness, a lot of people getting misconstrued. And I'm not misconstrued, but people that are coming to the channel for the first time. Or right, here's some of the stuff I've been saying. I, we've been dropping some bombs. Bro. We've been, we ain't no theologians for real, officially, and all that good stuff. But we've been bringing out some heavy hidden facts about Christianity, about what we believe, about DNA, about Yoruba, Bantu, and them being the Israelites and their migration patterns and all this stuff. Commandments, Passover, all this stuff y'all been here, all right? So now, I just thought I would do a video to keep me from getting on Facebook and being messy and dramatic. Sometimes you hear people say, young black people can be the most mentally enslaved people I've ever seen. Like, we think like slaves. Like, it's brothers that, that literally all they do, now these are young black guys, all they do is say, oh, I'm going to defend the integrity of the gospel and, and, and the historical truth of the word and, and, and what God was really saying back then. But your mascot is a European dude with sandy blonde, sandy brown hair and blue eyes. Oh, wait till you see the. No, 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 no. Oh, look at the top of his head. Look at his lips. That a dude that never existed in history. My, 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 my thing is, if you don't believe what somebody is talking about, you have to be educated. You have to be smart. You have to be polished. You have to study to show yourself approved. If you're going to come at me and bash me about Hebrew Israelites this and Hebrew Israelites that and you're a cult and you're a cult, we're going to defend white Jesus against this cult. And, and let's be real. So I'm a cult or I'm a heretic for... Proving my nationality? Really, nigga? It's like these dudes call themselves Christian apologetics preachers. And their whole goal is to refute Hebrew Israelites. So you're going to refute a nationality? Like, come on, like, like, what are you really saying? It's like me saying, I'm going to prove that white people are not white. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be right. Like, come on, dude. Like, you have to use common sense. Your best bet, right, especially as a black person, I'm like, young, black, charismatic, gifted, anointed preachers are using that, the spirit of God in them, to fight against the awakening of their own people. Well, I get it. If you don't believe what I'm saying about the Yoruba, the Bantu, the Limba, the Igbo, if you don't believe that they're Hebrew Israelites, do your research. Derek Lang, you can research this guy um, on the oral traditions of the Yoruba and how they have a king's list that matches the king's list of Israel in the Bible, right? Like, come on, like you, no one can disprove the Igbo, the Limba, the Yoruba, just to name a few. Any amount of scholarship and research will show you that even white European Americans and people around the world, Jewish scholars, like, like y'all hold on, hold on a second. The Jewish Encyclopedia vouches for the stuff I'm saying.
to get every single book that proves truth. I mean, I wouldn't have a bookshelf big enough. But you know what I'm saying, right? How can you disprove a people's origin? If you're going to do that, give me hard facts. Give me research into your own DNA. This is the thing that gets me, y'all. You got young black people saying, we're not Hebrews, we're Africans. Okay, prove it. Have you done your DNA? Have you done your African ancestry? Have you done 23andMe? Have you done Family Tree DNA? No. Really? So you don't know who you are, but you're telling me who you're not? Who are you? The question is, who are you? I thought I knew. Now I'm not so sure. Well, I know who you are. First to learn thing. And y'all Christians don't get me started, black or white. You defending Christmas trees, which ain't in the Bible. You defending an Easter, which ain't in the Bible. You're defending a white Christ that got crucified for a crime he didn't do with his hands up. He was an innocent man with his mama watching. And you think that dude was white? that shocked the world. Just last week, the officer who shot and killed Philando Castile was acquitted, adding more outrage to the already fraught relationship between the police and the black community. And now comes fresh video of this deadly encounter. Please don't tell me that he's gone. It was the Facebook live stream that horrified a nation. Diamond Reynolds filming the aftermath of a shooting involving her boyfriend, Philando Castile hit several times by a police officer in Minnesota. So he licensed to carry. He was trying to get out his ID and his wallet out his um, pocket and he let the officer know. Now, police dash cam video released just this week. <laughs> shedding new light on the moments leading up to that shooting. You have a license and shirt? That's when Castile reveals he has a gun, which he had a license to carry. About 40 seconds after approaching the car, Officer Geronimo Yanez opens fire. Sir, I have to tell you, I do have a okay. firearm okay. on me. Don't reach for it, son. Don't pull it out. Don't pull it out. He fired a total of seven rounds into the car. But what's not seen in either video is what Castile was actually reaching for. Officer Yanez's defense team says he feared Castile was reaching for that gun. I told him not to reach for it. Mm -hmm. Kept it right there, and I told him to take his hands off of it. And then he, he had his grip a lot wider than a wallet. Last week, a jury acquitted Yanez on charges of manslaughter and two counts of endangering Castile's girlfriend and her young child, who was in the back seat at the time of the shooting. The verdict left a community reeling. This is Philando Castile's mother. And I am so very, 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 very disappointed and the system here in the state of Minnesota. Can this city kill my son? And the murderer gets away. This latest Philandro Castle, Mike Brown, just to name a few. Black people, this is the culture of our people of being wrongfully accused, oppressed, and mistreated. But you're telling me the Hebrews during the time of Egypt that were there were slaves for 400 years, mind you. You're telling me there were white people building pyramids in the hot scorches? Come on, this be real, y'all. That's the long-term effects of white Jesus drug overdose. That's what it does to your brain. It eliminates common sense at the equation. I love when people go to the Bible, but they don't go to the Bible. They quote a scripture, but they don't go through the who, what, when, where, why, the how. This is the stuff they teach us in school that you have to come to the table credible. You have to look at the history of the people during that time. The entire chapter, not just one verse. Your Sunday school pork chop eating Christian pastor told you to quote and, and that's what that verse means. And you didn't even bother to read all of the context. See, see, <laughs> and I come from this life, y'all, and, and I'm a part of the problem, right? I was raised in the Christian church. I am a licensed minister going on. I was licensed at 16 and I was ordained to pastor a church at 25. I've been doing this thing, y'all, and I ain't saying I know everything, but I've been raised in the Bible. I've read the Bible from cover to cover, which most Christians haven't, but they say they know what the Bible means. You saying that you know what the Bible means and you ain't read it? Really, nigga?
You already disqualified. Black people telling me we're not Hebrews, but you don't know who you are. You're already disqualified. And this is the thing to you, brother, someone. We're Hamites. African Americans are Hamites. Like Negro. Have you read the Bible Dictionary? Now, if anybody has a Bible Dictionary, more than not, they have a Zondervan. So, now, this might not be the most current, up-to-date edition, because you know they revise these things every so odd years. But the Zondervan Comeback Bible Dictionary tells you, under the definition of Ham, that this does not include the Negro, and I will list that up here so you guys can see that. My thing is, black people can be, we, we just don't research things, y'all. Like, people that tell me, oh, Deuteronomy 2868, you say that slaves went into, to, to, you, African Americans went into Egypt or slavery on ships, and that's what that verse is talking about. Uh, yeah, what other people went through these things? Genesis 2, 7, God created him out of the dust of the earth. Um, in Genesis 37, uh, Joseph was sold into Egypt. When his brothers came back into Egypt, they couldn't recognize him. Moses was mistaken as an Egyptian to the point he was raised in Pharaoh's house. Judges 16, 13, Delilah cut the seven locks off Samson's head. Song of Solomon 1, 5 says, I am black but beautiful. This is Solomon talking. Uh, Job 30, 30 says that my skin is black upon me. Lamentations 4, 8. Lamentations 5, 10. Jeremiah 8, 21. Jeremiah 14, 2, Revelation chapter 1, 14 through 15 tell you the color of Christ. Daniel chapter 7 is the fulfillment of that, as well as Genesis chapter 49. Y'all don't get me started on these things. I got these scriptures and I'm packing these things and I do these things in my sleep, y'all. Because I study that book and I believe God's word and I study it showing myself. Paul was mistaken as an Egyptian in Dagum, Acts chapter 21, verse 38. Do your research. Dagum, Christ, when Hera tried to kill him, he fled into Egypt. To hide, the angel told Mary and Joseph to go into Egypt to hide until Herod was killed. Christ was able to blend in in Africa. Understand these things. See, we took a book, and then not to mention Israel was in Africa and Egypt for 400 years, building pyramids in slavery until God led them out of that 400 years of slavery. And the first slaves to come in America is 1619, and it's just not 2020, so it's right on the head of 400, 401 years we've been in captivity even now. Genesis 15, 12 tells you about how God told Abraham that his seed was going to be a stranger in a strange land for 400 years and then God was going to judge that nation. I um, wink wink America. The Bible is full of this truth. Like the, the Bible is full of God's people being a dark skinned people, being living amongst dark skinned people, marrying dark skinned people. Judah's first wife was a Canaanite. Joseph's wife was Egyptian. Moses' wife was an Ethiopian. And you telling me their kids weren't going to be black? Solomon and Queen of Sheba, men elect the first and said to live in Africa among the Beta Israel and Ethiopia, and they flew them black jokes over there to the land of Israel. Do your research. There's a video that I'm gonna link right here. E1B1A study by Dr. Yehoshua ben Ephraim, a brother of mine in terms of the tribe of Ephraim, tribe, house of Joseph. He did a teaching on these things. Also, I'm gonna show you another video right here where this man is talking about how black people are the chosen people of God and he lives in the land of Israel. Listen closely. Jews were brought in Israel. 
Israel, most of them are white. Not most of them, almost all of them are white, including me. I was brought in Israel from a country which is called Bulgaria. It's a European country. And I can tell you that in every European country, there are Jews and there is so-called organization Jewish Agency, which is trying to take the Jews to Israel. Uh, if you track, if you track the, 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 this organization, you can find out that this is not an Israeli organization. This is an American organization. Jewish Agency is an American organization which has exclu the exclusive right to decide who is Jewish and who is not on this planet and who to be taken to Israel and who is not. Now, if you, if, you, if you do research, you will find out that in Africa, in black Africa, they're looking for Jews only in Ethiopia. They bring Jews only from Ethiopia. And I can tell you by knowing a lot of people, Ethiopian Jews here in Israel, that they're treated very badly, very badly. And many of them commit suicide because they cannot take it. So they come from some place, Ethiopia, they even don't have much there, but they live decent life. And they, when they come here and try to be humiliated and, and, and so on, they, some of them don't, cannot even take it. Now, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that um, why? why? Why from each white country this Jewish agency is trying to, to uh, bring Jews? And when it's about black Africa, they're going to Ethiopia and this is where they stop. The only fun place. Now, um, because of the same thing, they're trying to do the white supremacy here. They try to, to, to bring white guys here and to take the supremacy over Arabs, which are the local citizens, and over blacks, which are so far the only the Ethiopian Jews. Now, um, what I'm trying also to say is that, that um, another question is why? Why, why America needs Israel? There's no, in Israel, there's no. There is no oil like in other Middle Eastern countries. There's no nothing they can be attracted to. But why do they do all these things? Why do they invest money, bring white people, and so on? When they build their system of white supremacy, just like in America, they build in Israel. Why? And I can tell you why. Because the true Jews, according to the Bible, you can check it in the Bible, you can read Job 30, 30, or some other places, they have never been white. They have been people of color. And they have not stopped in Ethiopia. They were in West, in Ethiopia, Sudan, and they have settled in West Africa. From West Africa, they have been taken as a slave to America. Brothers and sisters, blacks of America, it's you. You are the true Hebrews. You are the true Hebrews from the Bible. America going to do everything, going to invest as much money as it has, going to fight as much wars as they, as they can, going to invite as much weapons as they can just to hide this away from you. Going to take Israel, going to bring white people here and to tell you these are the Jews, going to do, going to kill you, going to kill Arabs, going to mistreat white people like this guy just to tell you this lie, that, that you are nobody and we are the Jews with all the history and so on. It has been deleted your history. You don't know who you are. Don't forget about it. This is why it's America has been taking your history away. Never to find out that it's all about you. I'm telling you this, please. I don't know. I don't ask you to come to Israel and to start a revolution. I'm just trying asking you to start thinking this way, to believe me a little bit, because I'm living in Israel and I'm part of this uh, injustice. I really believe that people like me and you. We can, we can bring the justice back. Thank you. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Let me show you another video with a woman that lives in the land of Israel saying black people are the chosen.
I hope that help you. And me show you also some more credible sources about this. There's a man by the name of Josephus, who is a dead gum contemporary. That means he lived during the time of Christ, contemporary of Christ. And he is one of the most credible, if not the most credible Jewish scholar on the account of the migrations of Israel. And he documented on the dead gum Jewish war that over a million Jews fled into Africa during AD 70 when General Vespasian and his son Titus destroyed Jerusalem in AD 70. This is history, and I'll show a snapshot of that. I'm true to this. I do this every day, y'all. Y'all been watching the journey. I done done my DNA, spent buku amount of money to get all these books and all this research, y'all. But right there, that, that book shows you the images of Christ before the Renaissance. I got another, another book called the Vornay. Also shows you ancient images of Christ before the white folks went in there. Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, Caesar Borgia image of this white Christ that came about during the time of the 1600s to enslave Negroes from the truth of who they are. Okay, now let me show you some books. Arthur Koestler's The Thirteenth Tribe. Arthur Koestler is an Ashkenazi Jew that lives in the land of Israel. He wrote a book called The Thirteenth Tribe where he proved that 90% of the so-called Jews in the world today, predominantly Ashkenazi Jews, do not have a trace of biblical Hebrew Israelite blood in them at all. Another Ashkenazi credible source, Shlomo San, who is an Ashkenazi Jewish geneticist, also vouches for this same information. Y'all, the research is out here. Henry Ford had a book, um, The World's Biggest Conspiracy. You can Google that on Amazon. I don't have that book. I plan on getting it. Henry Ford knew. But y'all better wake up now. We the people of God, and it's time for us to act like it. If you a Christian that ain't convinced yet, come to me, and that's really just dialogue by the scriptures. And don't come in heady or proud or, I mean, win this brother, he's lost. I've been doing this stuff. I've been doing your Christianity longer than you. I've been a licensed preaching minister since 16. I've gone to countless churches. I've done countless youth revivals and other seminaries. I've done lessons on the Hebrew studies. I've done four-hour lectures amongst other bishops and pastors and leaders that believe like this. I've talked to bishops, pastors, and leaders, and even they say, well, you, you need to do a teaching on these things. It's one thing for you to be a Christian and say, well, I don't believe in Passover, even though the Lord celebrated it. I don't believe in commandments, even though the Ten Commandments tell me what's wrong with doing them. You get thou shalt not steal from the Ten Commandments, but you're saying the commandments was done away with? No. The penalty for you not keeping them was done away with because of Christ's blood. He never told you that because of his grace you get to sin and do whatever you want. That ain't in the Bible. You ain't gonna find that nowhere. But Christians and white people have, have put this message in black people's communities to get us to not have a standard. We don't have a standard. We don't love each other. We have the highest rates of incarceration and murder amongst our community because we don't have a moral compass because the Christian church turn around and tell you that the laws of God done away with even though America uses the laws to convict your tail if you steal, if you murder, if you covet and all these other things. Like, come on, y'all. Use common sense. It's Satan's way to keep God's people afflicted, blind, and destroyed. Hashtag JB5. Trap. Somebody got to tell these boys the truth now. Black people is the children of God, and ain't one Christian on this earth can prove me otherwise. If you can't comment, send me your, your, your big um, number or something. We can talk about these things. Know about the original King James, the 1611, from which the modern King James has been revised, and they took books out of the Bible. Like 1st and 2nd Maccabees, the book of Baruch, the book of, um, what else they took out? Ecclesiasticus. 
a lot of these books were taken out because they have hidden gems in them. Let me drop one for you. In 1 Maccabees chapter 1 verse 41, it tells you about them eating foods that were sacrificed to gods, right? Pork was chiefly. So then Christians go to the Degum New Testament and talk about Paul, right? They talk about how Paul told them, well, just tell the new church, don't, don't, don't stress the Gentiles out. Just tell them not to eat those foods that are sacrificed unto idols. He was low-key dropping a nugget about pork. See, Christians come and say, oh, Paul says that the commandments are done away with. He was the apostle to the Gentiles. You don't even know what Gentile even means. You don't understand about the Hellenized Israelites during the time of the Romans because all of that information in history is in 1 Maccabees. 2 Maccabees 6.6 6. lets you know in that chapter, the Greeks and the Romans made it illegal for any person to call themselves a Jew. That means you couldn't keep Sabbath. You couldn't say you ain't eating pork or you were put to death. So these Israelites during the time of the Greeks and the Romans were Hellenized. That's when you get crossing over like a lot of black fraternities and sororities, they cross over. We get that from the period when our forefathers, black people, black Hebrews, were Hellenized and were crossed into the Greek and Roman culture. So they couldn't keep a lot of customs. So what happens during the time of Christ, when he comes on the scene, he knows about a lot of these lost sheep of his people that been living any kind of way. That's just a little nugget, y'all. I can go in more detail. But set your heart to please God and to keep his commandments. God ain't saying you got to be perfect, but it's like a credit card. You, you just don't swipe it just willy-nilly. You're going to have to pay that eventually. The Christian church uses grace as some kind of scapegoat where you just do whatever you want. That's not God's heart. God wants his people to turn back to him and seek him. And black folks, we got to do better about these things. And stop believing in a white Jesus fairy tale on Christmas trees that ain't nowhere near the Bible. So this is evidence that is well documented, y'all. Not to mention Deuteronomy 28. With all the curses in Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 68, if you don't see that our people went through all these curses, you are so blind and so stuck on your ways and not humble enough to really look at truth for what it is that I, I can't help you. Only the most I can help you. I can just lead you to water. I can't make you drink to, to save yourself from dehydration, right? So our people, the descendants of the people, y'all, and I got so much evidence. I can do video after video. But y'all, if you're going to come at me with, oh, that's not right, have some evidence. Have some history. Be able to first tell me who you even are. And don't say African American because that's two continents. And don't say black because that's a color. Tell me what country in Africa you come from, what tribe of people you come from, and what's the oral tradition of that people. If you can prove to me that black people don't descend from Israel, then we have an argument. But these people come to me that just these Christians talking about that stuff doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We'll tell the truth. God is God of, of spirit and of truth. He said, they that worship me can worship me in spirit and in truth. Christ said, the truth should set you free. So why are we telling lies about white Jesus and he don't exist? This is a service announcement. I am JB Zion and I approve this message. Let's get it.